The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. All right, action. You got time for coffee? Sure. What time is it? 10.40. Oh, no! And how are we going to make a living, hmm? It won't matter, as long as we make a life. Thank you. Your father sends his best. I saw him yesterday in New York. Oh, I wish you wouldn't have said that. I always feel as though I'm here because of him. With talent like yours, I wouldn't worry. Oh, thank you. And thank you, too, Mr. Hudson. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, Tom. We have one more scene. Uh, no, that's all. We have a no-show, Paulette Douglas. Is she sick? Not that I know of. I'm sure she'll be here any minute. I'm sorry, Laura. I'm out of time. All right. Thank you, class. That will be all until after lunch. Yes, thank you all for a very rewarding and stimulating morning. Uh, Johnny, you're not going to drop any of these kids. You saw how well they work. Well, I just saw Mr. Bracken yesterday in New York, and he said to cut $20,000 a week out of the studio overhead. I think you just missed him, and by the way, it was his loss. Was that Mr. Churchill? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm sorry I was late. I was on Kevin Grant's set watching Daisy. Maybe do a stunt. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. The time... Forget it, Paulette. Gosh, you're really sorry me. Well, if I am, it's probably too late. I hope you haven't just blown your entire career. studio are thought out. They're not capricious. If people are hurt in the process, it's not because we are unfeeling. It's because we have no other choice. You're beginning to sound like Mr. Bracken. I wish he were here, sitting in his own chair. So you wouldn't have to be the hatchet man? Now you say that because you think I'm going to do my own dirty work, but I'm not going to do it. You are. 
You want me to fire these people? You know them and I don't. If I did it, it would just seem too easy. Firing must be difficult, otherwise it's impersonal. But I'm just a secretary, Johnny. You're much more than just a secretary, Sylvia. You're Bracken's mask. You're the smile on his face. Why Paulette Douglas? Because she missed her audition. No. It's a matter of survival. Some people are good gambles and some aren't. See you. Oh, uh, not that way. I've just been talking to Mr. Churchill, who's been sent out here from the New York office. Oh, yeah, I bumped into him earlier. Well, uh, he's been asked to cut down the studio overhead, which includes economies in the talent school, among other places. Well, what I mean is... Oh, I think I'm beginning to get the message. Oh, I'm sorry, Paulette, but Century Pictures is not going to renew your contract. You mean I'm being dropped? We like you, uh, but in view of the economies that have to be made... Well, Rachel and Diane and all the others, don't their options come up about the same time as mine? Now, not having one's option picked up isn't the end of the world, Paulette. Of course, Mom, I know that. There are other studios that might want you. Uh, there are also independent producers, TV networks. Then there's just plain good old time off to think. You surprise me, Paulette. Because you're taking it so well. I didn't know I would feel this way either. Maybe this is the beginning of something better for you. Uh, you'll be around for another 30 days, you know, until your contract runs out. Yes, I know. I'm going to miss you, Paulette. It was pleasant having you around. Oh, thank you, Miss Caldwell. And I always remember how nice you were to me. And I'm sorry it just didn't work out. Sexy girl. She's, uh, she's drifting. One job to another, one man to another. But she is going to find her own thing and very soon. Sounds good. I like playing against type. Mm. There's a first draft. Read it and tell me what you think. Hi, Paulette. Oh, hi. Hi, Davy. Miss Caldwell just told me the studio is not going to pick up my option. Honey, I'm sorry. Did it have anything to do with your being late for that audition this morning? It might have, but it wasn't your fault. It was me. I should have remembered the time. Well, it's not the end of the world. Let's say we go out tonight and try to forget it. We can take it a movie or something, and we'll weep together later. Anything but that. I don't want to see a movie for at least a year. And I don't feel like weeping. You sure don't. Is it real? Am I not caring? Mm -hmm. It sure seems to be. You're all right, kid. So are you. Have you told Mama yet? I called her a few minutes ago. How'd she take it? As if I didn't know. It. Maybe I don't belong in this business. Don't belong in the business after what we've worked for? Don't think that. Don't even say it. Stop shouting, Mama. I told you they're not picking up my option. Well, I don't care. It's not the end. Marilyn Monroe was dropped by three studios. Three studios, mind you, before she returned. Returned, mind you, to 20. Problem with you is you never had a chance to show what you could do, and we're not going to take this lying down. There's nothing that can be done. 
Mr. Churchill's out from New York, and there's a big economy Why drive. Why not, Rachel? Diane. Tom Hudson. Why, you? I guess I'm not that good. As if that makes a difference. What's important is what the studio thinks they can do with you. Sometimes they don't know they have to be told. Mama, come back here. Don't meddle. What about what I want to do with me? Oh, baby, how are you expected to know? Look at you. You're in shock. I'm not in shock. You're in shock. Don't you see that, Mama? I'm relieved. Uh, um, have lunch with the baby and enjoy yourself. Where are you going? Uh, nowhere, baby, nowhere. And you're right not to worry. Uh, what is important, we still have each other, right? Are you sure you don't want to go to the commissary with us? <laughs> Who's hungry? Yeah, uh, paragraph four. Uh, that's right. Uh, send them right over. Yes, all right. Thanks. Bye. Miss Caldwell? Somehow I expected you, Mrs. Douglas. Yeah, well, we stage mothers have a tough career, Miss Caldwell. You want to know about Paulette? Hmm. It's because she wasn't good enough? I mean, since when doesn't a studio make allowances for a girl as gorgeous as Paulette? Since now, I'm afraid. The feeling is that Paulette will never be good enough. I see. Frankly, Mrs. Douglas, as beautiful as Paulette is, her lack of drive is on film. It's right up there on the screen. Well, that's the way you and Laura Dean's here, because you're, um, uh, women. That's the way Johnny Churchill saw her. her I... Laura Dean and I happen to agree with him. I, I want to see Mr. Churchill. He's very busy, Mrs. Douglas. He's due back in New York day after tomorrow, and he has a great deal to do. Well, surely you're not going to deny me the opportunity of having a few words with him. I mean, after all, Miss Caldwell, when you fire my daughter, you fire me. All right, but just for a few minutes. Johnny, Mrs. Douglas is here. All right, send her in. You're disappointed about Paulette. You're not? Well, I hardly know her, Mrs. Uh, Douglas. Douglas. Douglas, yes. Well, well, maybe that's the problem. Oh, she's a star, Mr. Churchill. Oh, maybe not at the moment, but it won't be long. She's beautiful, genuinely beautiful. She has an inner quality that's, that's irresistible to men. Now, once that's discovered by the mass audience, she'll pull people young and old alike into the box office. Oh, you're convinced, but now then, you're her mother. Well. I'm a dollar and cents man, Mrs. Douglas. And our investment in Paulette hasn't paid off. But she's never been given a chance to show what she could do. I, well, how much film do you have on her? I, uh, a walk-on in one feature, some two-line bits and a couple of television shows. Now, is that enough to make judgment on? Just give her the opportunity. She's not what you think. No, she's a, she's a passionate, warm-blooded girl. Sit down, Mr. Churchill. Just, just take a few, a few minutes. Let me share some pictures now. now. Now, look at that face. Look at that picture. Now, look. Isn't she beautiful? Now, why don't you at least take the time to get to know her? Oh, I'll have it back on time, I promise. Oh, Edie, you're a lifesaver. Mr. Douglas? Davey. You going the same way? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, oh, listen, I have news for you. Paulette has a late audition. She can't see you tonight. You're kidding. I just talked to her. Oh, she doesn't know about it yet. I tell her I'll call her later. But she won't be home until it's too late to take calls. You really do your thing. You're beautiful. You really are. You can't stand me. But then don't let that worry you. No one can stand me. You know what? What? I really can stand you, but it isn't easy. Get out of that dress and get ready for...
for the biggest date of your life. Something tells me I'm not going to like this. <laughs> That's Raquel Welsh. Yeah, I had Edie Alder it for you. You're going to a preview with Johnny Churchill. Johnny Churchill? Mm -hmm. I have a date with Davy. Mm -hmm. And Mama, I'm not going to a preview Paulette, with Paulette. Paulette, when Lady Luck glances at you, do not spit in her eye. I happen to find out Johnny was going Johnny. to. Johnny? Mm -hmm. Mama, since when do you call him Johnny? Well, Mr. Churchill, if it makes you feel better. He said he didn't have a date for the preview tonight, wanted company. I, I said you were free, and uh, his face lit up. What do you expect me to do, deprive him? I mean, I know what it is to be lonely myself, I identify. Besides, I couldn't help myself. He did say it was his loss at the temple school this morning. Mama, I've already been dropped. Doesn't that sink in? I don't like that. Obviously, you just can't help yourself. Uh, all right, Paulette, come on. Stop treating me like I'm retarded. He'll be here in 20 minutes. Get the dress off. Now, listen, I have told Davy that you won't be able to make it tonight. He realizes how important it is, so everything's arranged, and what's the deal? Come on. Okay, hurry up. Oh, and uh, stop trying to make believe you don't want to go, because I know you do. Oh, the last thing in the world I wanted to do was see a picture. playing bridge at ease until about two, okay? Okay, Mama. Mm -hmm. You're not sort me, are you? Not two. Well, because in the long pool, baby, all we've got is each other. Daddy's early. Uh, I'm coming. Hi, come in. Good evening. I'll be ready in just a second. It seems like I'm always late. Well, tonight is my fault. I made you late by arriving early. As if I weren't enough at a disadvantage already. I kind of like having you at a disadvantage. Is that why you fired me? We didn't fire you, we just didn't rehire you. And I didn't know at the time that I wanted to have you at a disadvantage. When did you decide you did? Just now. I'll be a minute. Make yourself a drink. Shall I fix one for you? Uh, how much time do we have? No, there's no rush. There's no rush at all. What do you like? Oh, anything to do, thank you. You look gorgeous, but you remind me of someone. Raquel Welsh? Well, how did you guess? This was her dress. <laughs> well, you do as much for it as she does. Don't let Bracken hear you say that. It'll make what you did today seem foolish. Not at all. Now, who needs two Raquel Welches, or two anybody's for that matter? What show business needs is uniqueness. At the moment, I'm not in show business, remember? I'm sorry about what happened, Paulette. That's all right. It was strictly a business decision. I don't want you to think it had anything to do with us personally. Personally? Because it didn't. <sighs> You know, a girl like you is a rarity. Beautiful, honest, but not driven. It's like you're too great at being a girl to be an actress. <sighs> wow, that's some dialogue. You don't waste much time, do you? Can I help it if you turn me on? Look, let's forget the preview. I'll send out for some Chinese food. We'll eat here and spend a nice evening together. How does that sound? As a matter of fact, it sounds nice. I don't want to see a movie no. anyway. That's good, because there wasn't one. There wasn't one? <laughs> no. I thought you might turn down a date if I didn't have something special to offer. You're pretty insecure. When it comes to beautiful women, I'm very insecure.
What are you thinking about? I can't figure out if you're for real or not. Of course I'm for real. That's what makes me so nice. You mean you've got your hang-ups just like I got mine? Sure. The thing is not to let them get in the way. We like each other, don't we? Well, then we should reach out for each other in a totally meaningless way. Meaningless? Now, what's that supposed to mean? The meaning of meaninglessness is completely clear. Completely. It means that we have no ties, and therefore we'd have no remorse and no regrets. The only thing that we would have is the pleasure of being together. You make it sound so simple, and I must say meaningless. Right, you're getting it. No phone calls the following morning unless you feel like it. No obligation to send flowers or be sentimental or worry. You mean just hit and run? No, not hit and run. Kiss, love, adore, share, remember or forget. The big problem with people who are attracted to one another is that they kill it by insisting that the relationship have meaning. NG, pass. Give and don't regret, that's all. And let yourself feel, because if you do, it's impossible to be phony. Tonight can be one of the beautiful nights of our day. Uh, it's not going to get quite that meaningless. I'll wait and see. After all, it takes time to understand meaninglessness. It's very demanding. But that's okay. We have until 2. Until 2? Did I say something wrong? How did you know my mother wasn't coming home until 2? Well, she told me. Is that so terrible? Yes, that's terrible. Why would my mother tell you what time she's coming home? Well, it must have slipped out, but I don't see anything wrong in it. Nothing slips out with my mother. What did you two have worked out anyway? That if I had this meaningless relationship with you, I get my option picked up? Is that what she wanted? Paula, please, I... This whole evening was a setup. You and she planned everything. Well, that's a pretty ugly accusation. Yes, isn't it? Would you please go? Well, Paula, look, I'm sorry, Please, but... just go. It went fine, until I found out what you did. After that, it got kind of revolting. Revolting? What are you talking about? You set me up with him so they wouldn't drop my option, didn't you? How can you say a thing like that? I don't know, but suddenly it's easy. You were selling me, Mom, and there's a terrible heart. <gasps> I'm sorry. No, I'm not. You were selling your own I wasn't daughter. selling, I wasn't offering, I wasn't pushing, I was only allowing. Get that through your head, Paulette. It's through my head, Mom. Well, you, you, your career was, was finished. Is that what you want? The woods were burning. You, something had to be done by you. Well, you certainly weren't doing anything. I didn't want to. Maybe it's because you didn't know how. Maybe it's because I've overprotected you and, and, and you don't know what that old world is like out there. Why are you so desperate? Because I've been there and I don't want to go back. Oh, Paulette, we had something going for us. We had, we had some excitement. We, we had glamour, a future. We, we had life. Did we, Mom? Yes, we did. And I'm telling you I will go to any lengths to protect it. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Poverty is death. And if you have to go out with a charming man one night in your life to save us from that, then don't you cry and complain to me because it just doesn't reach me. It's no punishment, Paulette. It is a lucky break. That's what it is. I don't look at it like that. Well, you better look at it like that. Because it's about time you understood everything you have came from my looking at it like that. My manipulating got you your screen test. 
My manipulating got you your contract, and my manipulating is trying to save you from becoming a beautiful little... nothing! That's it, Mama. I want out. Paulette, be careful what you're saying. I've thought it over. Paulette? I'm leaving. Paulette, come back here. Paulette, you can't make it on your own. You don't know how. You haven't even tried. You don't even know the rope. Goodbye, Mother. What made you walk out? I mean, it must have been something. Okay, you don't want to talk about it. It's all right with me. Oh, Rachel, she was just too overbearing, that's all. It was the same old thing. Push, push, push. It came to a head, and I left. At least she's interested. Interested? You mean driven. But caring, right? Are you trying to make me feel bad? You, I think I'm trying to make myself feel bad. I get that way about other people's parents. Like I hardly knew my own, so I suffer, 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 because I feel so deprived. Maybe you've been better off, Rachel. And maybe you've been confused. No maybe about it. I can definitely state I have been confused about my mother and my career. That's one thing I'm not. Ruthless? Okay, I've been accused of being that by experts. But confused? No. I've wanted a career since I was five. It must be wonderful to be that sure of anything. Paulette, if you're not that sure, you can bet you don't want it. Because if you are, you can feel it ache inside of you like a perpetual heartburn. Then it's my mother who has a heartburn. Hello? Hello, Rachel. Uh, can you make a publicity layout for me this morning after your class? Uh, it's for an AP Sunday feature. Sure. But why so sudden? Uh, well, it's sudden because Paulette was supposed to do it, and, uh, well, uh, she's being dropped. And uh, there's no point in wasting a good layout. Sure. I can make it. That was already in publicity. Why didn't you tell me you were being dropped? I'm so ashamed. Ashamed? Oh, boy, that does it. What do those guys in the front office know about talent anyway? They dropped Marilyn Monroe. I know. I've heard. But I'm not like her, Rachel. I guess not. You're a sufferer. I'm not suffering. And you're a liar. You are too ashamed to tell me now that's suffering. Okay, I've suffered a little. Maybe you're just a lousy actress. Maybe. You know, I think you would have been dropped even if there hadn't been an economy drive. So what do you think of that? You could be right. Maybe I don't belong in this business. I can't even get a rise out of you. Come on, let's get dressed. I'll drive you to class. No, I'm going to meet Davy. Besides, I don't want to go to class. Why not? Everyone on the lot will know about it by now anyway. Come on. You coming? Listen, I heard about the bad news, Paulette. I'm sorry. What are you going to do now? Marry Davy? That's what you ought to do. Why is it when you say it, it sounds like a put-down? Well, why should you feel that it's a put-down if that's what you really want? How do you know what I really want? You're not doing your own thing. You're doing your mother's thing. Look, I know what it's like to have a family around your neck. I've got one. And you know they make believe they're starving, but altogether they must weigh 10,000 pounds. And if they don't sink you one way, baby, they'll sink you another. Great. You do your own thing. Oh, hey, listen, if you ever, uh, if you ever get tired of watching stunts, you call me.
party. Is it in the trades? Why is what in the trades? About my option. Well, well what about your option? Artie, stop trying to be nice. Me? Nice? <laughs> Listen, I know you have a job to do, and I'm not sure you called Rachel this morning to replace me in the layout. Oh, that. That wasn't me, you know. That came down right from the top. No, I haven't planted it in the trades yet. But I'll have to soon. When? A couple days? Listen, what do you care about a layout? You never like doing the sexy bit anyway. I mean, you want to get married and have children and settle down and all the rest of that stuff, just like the rest of us normal types, right? I mean, if you don't want to do any publicity, move over and make room for somebody who really wants to become a nut, right? I mean, Rachel, I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to do a layout for a throwaway in a town of five people, right? I mean, I know what it takes. But how many people have got that much? Paulette, is this your first time in front of the camera? Yes. Can't you tell? What about your background, Paulette? Well, my mother and I, uh, we, I mean, what I mean is ever since I was a young girl, a baby. Try and feel at ease, Paulette. Get, get up and walk around. I'll stay here, okay. Um, my father, he, he ran out on us, and my mother brought me up, and she was an actress, that is, when she was working. It just isn't easy. Camera staring me in the eye. How do you ever feel not self-conscious? Go on, Paulette. I guess I always wanted to be an actress because she was one and she was very beautiful. But I don't think I want to be an actress if I couldn't be good at it. Because it made my mother a little bitter. Turn your head to the right, dear. Now to the left. That'll be all for now, Paulette. You mean that's all there is to it? I'm a movie star now? Uh, well, not quite. We'll have to wait until Mr. Bracken looks at this. Fantastic. You're not even looking at it. Come on, look. Davy, it's gorgeous. Oh, forgive me. Honey, I was thinking about my screen test. Forget the test, will you? I've saved enough for a down payment. With my stunt work and with the horses I could rent to the studio. Well, I could support us until I get my law degree. You're free for the first time in your life. Free of the studio and free of your mother. Marry me, Paulette. I love you. Davy, it's a beautiful little ranch. Haven't you heard what I've been saying? I've been talking about us getting married. I know. But no matter what I say, I, I lose. I thought you'd welcome the idea of settling down. I can't even think about it now, Davy. It's like it's too sudden. I can't even get what happened today out of my mind. Do you want me out of the business? I do now. I want you to myself, the whole deal. A housewife package, including the starry eyes and apron bed. someone who's not tied to something else. 
Someone who wants to, to stay home and raise a family. Davey, I don't want to marry you by default. I don't want to marry you because everything else fell out and, and you're all I have left. What's so bad about that? People need each other. What do you want out of my life? I wanted out of your life was your help, and you gave it to me. In fact, I depended on it. Maybe what I wanted was right in front of me all the time, but I couldn't see it because it was blurred by my mother's wishes. Because I thought it was what she wanted, so I went out and blew it. Stupid way to get even, isn't it? When it comes right down to it, I have an option, too, don't I? You really do want to be an actress, don't you? Yes, I do. Then go out and get it. What happens to us? What's already happened to us. Yeah, Mitch. Send her in. Well, well, well. I don't think you've ever come to see me before, have you? Well, here I am. Sit down. Kevin, you know the girl on this script. Mm -hmm. The drifting sex spot that goes from man to man trying to find out what it's all about. Mm -hmm. That part was made for me. I want to play it and I can play it. Well, I know what's happened. I'm sorry. Let me test for it. I've been studying the part, and I know I can play her. It's the wrong time. And it is the wrong part. Believe me, Paulette, I know how you feel being dropped. But catching at straws isn't going to help. Inside. I think you know you're not right for it. I think I am right. And you've sold yourself a bill of goods. You're no more right for that role than I am. That just isn't so, Kevin. That girl's confusion is very real to me. That's why I can play her. Well, that the last thing in the world I'm going to do is cast a confused actress to play a confused character, huh? Well, I had to try. Paulette, if you want it, if you really want it, one of these days, something's going to come along that you're going to be better suited for, huh? Of course it will. I'm glad you dropped by. Keep in touch, okay? Sure. Grace Douglas. Paulette's mother. Uh, Paulette isn't here. She's at the studio. Oh, well, I, uh, I can't get on the lot. I was barred. Uh, would you at least give her a message for me? Sure. Uh, tell her I'll be working nights beginning next week. I can support her now. I have a job. And besides, I won't be in her way after dark. You have a lot of guts, haven't you? Yes. But underneath, I'm panicky. The thought of maybe never again being close to the one human being in this world I love. That just about destroys me. Well... Mrs. Douglas? Would you like to have a cup of coffee? Sure. Leaving Century Studios isn't the end of the world. 
I know, that's what everyone's told me. If you ever have a scene to do or a test, anywhere else at all, if you want to, call me. I'll be glad to help you with it. Thank you. Are you waiting for me by any chance? No, I'm waiting for Mr. Churchill. Any plans, offers, or things like that? No, not yet. Well, best of luck, Paulette. Thank you. Mr. Churchill? Now we're gonna make the shooting day. Excuse me. I want to say that I'm sorry Listen, for... I'm already late for a meeting, but I'm glad you're here. I was going to try to reach you before I left for New York. The last thing in the world I want is any bad feeling between us. I'd like to buy back my introduction to you, to start all over again. Your mother did push us together, Paulette, but before that, I was genuinely attracted to you. I was the hatchet man on your option, but I couldn't help that either. I don't want one thing to have anything to do with the other. You're a person, and I'm a person. And if we like each other, can't we just go on from there? No, Johnny, I don't want to go on from there. But I did want to say that I'm sorry for the way I behaved. It was childish. In the past few days, I have reevaluated my whole life, and I do want a career. I know that now, and I want to commit myself to working and getting as good as I possibly can. I never realized it meant so much to me. Well, I admire that in you, Paulette. But it's too late. It has nothing to do with us. But I can't resell you after unselling you. I hope you understand that. You probably have much better luck at some other studio anyway. anything the matter? There's something I want to say. Uh, Paulette, why don't you give me a ring tomorrow? Miss Caldwell, don't say I'm not supposed to be here. I know I'm not supposed to be here. Paulette, this is not the time or the place. This is the only time and place. Because when will I ever get the chance to speak to all of you at one time again? I can say this because for the first time in our relationship, we don't owe each other anything. I don't owe you loyalty, and you don't owe me consideration. You don't want to pick up my option? Fine, you have that right. But that gives me a right too, the right to speak to you as a professional. You're letting me go without knowing what I can do. I had a walk-on and a feature and two lines and a pilot. So what I'm asking for is not another chance, it's a chance. Let me show you what I can do, how much I want to do it, and how much I can improve with every chance you give me. You had your chance, Paulette. That's not enough for either of us. I'm afraid we can't give you any more time here, Miss Douglas. Thank you, cottage cheese. I call you that because I see you in the commissary every day, and that's what you eat. And you're one of my bosses, and you never wanted to meet me. Honey, there are 2,000 people on this lot, and while I might want to meet everyone, I can't. Then you'll always be cottage cheese to me. You're sweet rolls. Uh, Paulette, I don't think this is getting anyone anywhere. Where does it have to get us? And do you care? You're the all-knowing, all-seeing Miss Caldwell, who builds you up one minute and cuts you down to size the next, just so the studio can survive. That's not true, Paulette, and you know it. And who helps? Laura Dean, the Earth Mother, who cares so much for what she does is set you up for the slaughter, which is performed by the beautiful, cold-blooded hatchet man, Johnny Churchill, who stabs you and then charms you out of your pain. Stop it, Paulette. You act like this sort of thing is personal, and you know that it isn't. Of course not. It never is. Our lives are run by that great, invisible man who can't be spoken to. How could it possibly be personal? You just don't know what it's like, any of you. 
to work all day, every day, in a total vacuum, just hoping somebody will want you for something. Then you get what you think is a big break, and you attend a cattle call where you're paraded with dozens of others in front of some producer, or you get told about a role only to have it handed to somebody else off the lot who's somebody's friend. Judged day and night, then hired, told what to do, and then suddenly you're told you're better off some other place. What other place? Does anyone care? How about you? Did you care? I care now. I know that about myself. So, for whatever it's been, thanks to all of you, including Mr. Bracken, for teaching me that. And for whatever it's going to become, thank you, Paulette Douglas. <laughs> wonderful for exactly three minutes. Now I feel absolutely awful. Well, you were rude. You were tasteless. That entire scene was uncalled for. The studio won't forget it. But we've decided not to drop you. We saw a different Paulette for the first time. A Paulette who cared. And one who could become an exciting actress. So, you have six more months to prove yourself. Miss Caldwell, do you mean it? I'm not dropped. I can keep working here. Oh, thank you, thank you. I don't want your gratitude. This is not a club. We didn't do it because we feel sorry for you. It's strictly a matter of economics. We've invested more than $15,000 in training you. If we have a chance to get that back, we want that chance. It isn't personal, it's business. And whether or not you want to be in this business depends entirely on you. Yes, I know. Well, that's all. Good night. Good night, Miss Caldwell. And thanks again. I guess Rachel didn't tell you I have a job. I have a job, too. You do? What? Actors at Century Pictures. They're not dropping my auction, Mama! Mama. Get down and get down and off! They just changed their mind. Oh, it doesn't make a difference. It's marvelous, but... Oh, boy, it sure does make your old mother seem unnecessary. I pulled out all the stops and acted like... like you might have, Mama. Ah, Paulette! What they saw in me was you. Oh, no, baby. No, no, no. What... what they saw in you... was you. Ah, where are you going? Um, uh, home. I'm going with you. I'll get my suitcase. I'll pull it. Oh, you took the blue ones and you left me with a tacky tan. All right, I'll help you pack. No, there'll have to be new ground rules, both of us free and independent. Are you talking about Davy? About anyone, Mama. All right, we'll do it your way. Anything you say is okay with me. Mama, will you help me pack? 